Event tracking like button click tracking, form tracking or link tracking is quite hard to set up. Google Tag Manager makes our life easier, but unfortunately there is no direct connection you can use to send event tracking data to the email marketing automation tool ActiveCampaign. Until now. In this video I'm gonna show you how you can send dynamic event tracking data to ActiveCampaign with the help of Google Tag Manager and a Google Apps Script. All and more coming up right after this. Hi there and welcome to another video of measureschool.com where we teach you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian and on this channel we do tutorials, how-to videos and take a look at the latest marketing tech just like this one. So if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. Now we have been using the great email marketing automation tool ActiveCampaign on measureschool.com for quite some time now. The capabilities of ActiveCampaign paired with the inexpensive price is quite amazing. And as you might know, we're always looking for ways to make the data that we track with Google Tag Manager more useful and more actionable. So we were looking for a way on how we can send data to ActiveCampaign via Google Tag Manager. Unfortunately, ActiveCampaign makes it hard to send any data with Google Tag Manager into the tool because there's no really native JavaScript API available for it. So we came up with a workaround that utilizes Google Apps Script to send dynamic event tracking data into ActiveCampaign. And that's what I want to show you today. If you want to download our script and the tag template, head over to measureschool.com slash AC tracking. And we got lots to cover, so let's dive in. Today our journey starts at this brand new active campaign account where we want to install event tracking. How would this actually look like in the end? Let's go over to contacts. And here we would see our contacts that we have currently on our list. Now we want to send event data into one of these contacts. So for example here, we want on this profile to show up under all activities, our event tracking. Now there is something called site tracking as well, which is pretty easily installed. This will only give you the URL that the user visited and not interaction data that you can actually track with the help of Google Tag Manager. Before we can get started, we need to do some configurations. So let's go over to our settings and look under tracking here. And here we can install our site tracking. Now this is, as I mentioned, just the code that you can plug into your Google Tag Manager account to fire on all the pages, similar to our PageView tag that we fire for Google Analytics in order to do PageView tracking. But we want to actually go with the more advanced event tracking option, which lets us send in custom data to our account dynamically with the help of Google Tag Manager. So activate this option and what we need right here is our event key and later our account ID. This will be something that we need to copy in a second. Now down here, you need to actually define your events in advance. So you can't just send in any data into active campaign. You need to define your events in advance. And there are always two fields available, the actual name of the event and then the event data. So for example, I could predefine events like clicked or watched or added to cart. And these would now all be available to be sent into active campaign with custom data attached to them. How can we send data into active campaign? Well, with the event tracking API. Unfortunately, the recommended ways of doing this is mainly through backend technologies. So server side communication between your website server and the active campaign event tracking API, such as languages like PHP or Ruby. Now Google Tag Manager is based completely on JavaScript and we don't want to expose any kind of API keys with the requests that we send. And that's why I came up with a solution that actually utilizes a proxy via Google App Script. Now this is where the magic happens. We will send a request into our App Script. It will take the data, populate our API keys and then send that data onto the Active Campaign event tracking API. To make a copy of this proxy, you can head over to measureschool.com slash AC event tracking. Then you simply need to make a copy of the script into your own Google Drive account. And you're ready to use this app script. Now we need to fill out two parameters here. One is the API key 
and then the active campaign ID. How you can find them is described here. But as I mentioned already, we have here our event key. This is the key that we need to put into our copy right here. And then we need to have our account ID, which we have right here. Let's copy that over and replace that. That should do it. Let's save this. And the last step we need to go through is actually publish it. So let's go to this publish button and deploy as a web app. And the only setting we need to change here is that it is accessible to everybody and we can deploy this app. Now you will be granted to give this app permission to actually send data out and receive data. So we'll connect to external services, allow this, and we get our web app URL. Now with this URL, we can send our request. So let's open up a new tab here and I'm gonna enter our URL. And this only works if you have the right query string attached. What is this query string? I have a little example here. It's basically the question mark and then the key value pairs, the key email, the key event, and the key event data. And after the equal sign, you would put your values. So you need to define the email that this event should go to. You need to define the event, which we have defined previously in our settings, and the event data, and this can be dynamic, that is attached to this event. Let's press enter here. We get a response that this was successful. So we can go back to our account into the right contact that we sent this to. And we see now a new activity has been tracked, a click event with the value that we sent over of test. So this works as expected. Now, how can we make this useful in Google Tag Manager? Well, we can use this URL, let's copy that, to fire an event. Now in my Google Tag Manager account, I have come up with a little example where I send over an event for outbound link clicks to Google Analytics. Let's go into our preview and debug mode here. Try this all out. Here we have our website, our preview and debug mode opens. And if we click with the command key pressed on an outbound link, this will fire an event which carries the values of event category outbound link click and the event action is the URL that was actually clicked. So how can we simulate this with our active campaign tracking script? Let's go back to Google Tag Manager. And the click trigger is already defined. We actually show you how to accomplish the outbound link click in another video that you can check out as well if you want to replicate this. But now we want to build our AC tracking script and what we would need to do all this is actually three values. Again, the event key that we have already defined, which is clicked, the click URL, and the email address that we want to attach this to. Now there are different methods of actually getting the email address from the user. One would be to actually get the email address once it comes from a newsletter, for example, that you send out. You could put that into the query string itself and put it into a cookie so it's available to use later on. We actually show you how to do this in another video on pre-filling a form field where this method is also used. You could also capture the email address once he fills out a form or the preferred way doing it with Google Tag Manager would be to send that information into the data layer. This would obviously also only happen if the user is logged in. So in our example here, we have a plugin running that lets us pre-fills our data layer for us. So in this first message here, we have the visitor email that is currently logged in. So I'm logged in on this online store right now and therefore this data is pushed to the data layer. How will we get this out? Well, let's build a data layer variable. Go over here, simply click on new. This is a data layer variable for our email. Now we go ahead and choose our data layer variable. We just need a key. So what is the key exactly? This is the first value here, visitor email. Let's save this and we now have our email address dynamically replaced on whoever is logged in. Now we can go ahead and build our tag. So we'll go over to our tag section here. 
click on new, and this will be our active campaign event tag for outbound link clicks. As a tag configuration, we want to trigger this on a URL that needs to get pinged, and we could also use custom HTML, but we just need to ping a URL, the custom image tag will do. Now we enter here our URL for our web app. Let's go back here, here we go. Let's copy that, put it in here, and our query string. And obviously we need to replace our email address dynamically. So I'm gonna delete this and click the variable button to fill this dynamically with the data layer variable. So let's see again here, we send in the query string email equals, oh, it didn't put it in the right place. Let's take this and stick it after the email key right here. Then we want to have our event, which is predefined. This is clicked, we won't change that. But our event data is something we want to dynamically change to the actual clicked URL. So we get the same results as in our Google Analytics event. So again, we dynamically replace the email address with our data layer value and our event data with the click URL. Leave the settings here untouched and we'll go ahead and attach our outbound link click trigger. Again, if you wanna know how to set this up, you can check out the video on outbound link click tracking. Let's save all this and try it out. Let's refresh, go back to our page, refresh here as well. And I'm gonna click these links with the command key pressed so they open up in a new tab. And we see, once I click them, an active campaign outbound link click gets sent over and this data should now be available within our demo account. Obviously the contact needs to be registered within the system for this to happen. So let's go to our admin at demo shop and we see all this information is now readily available and it's dynamic because we can see that the links actually change dynamically depending on what we have clicked on our page. To spin this to the end, you would need to publish this as a version to all your users. Then it would be live to use for all your users and you would be tracking data depending if the email address is actually available once the user logs in. Now you can use that data very dynamically to actually build automations in active campaign, segment your data based on the different activities. And we actually use this at Measure School to build our abandoned cart email campaigns or when a user progresses through a course, we would be able to send him emails based on the progress that he has made within the course. So it's a really great feature to send in dynamic information into Active Campaign without clogging up all the different tags and custom fields that you can define within Active Campaign. So there you have it. This is how you can send a dynamic event tracking data into Active Campaign with the help of Google Tag Manager and our Google Apps Script. If you want to download the script and the tag template so you can upload it directly into your Google Tag Manager account, then head over to measureschool.com/ac-tracking. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Do you plan on using this event tracking with Active Campaign? What are the use cases that you used this before? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, please share it with a friend or a colleague and subscribe to this channel because we'll bring you new videos every Wednesday. My name is Julian, till next time.